I grew up in the 90s here in New York when fashion was, was a very special thing, you know, with the old polo, the North Face, the, the Air Max runners. I had always had a ton of different jobs and hustles, had fingers in a lot of different pots. There's so many different ways to skin the cat if, you, if, you, if you're smart and you're really going after it. Flipping sneakers has turned into a huge opportunity for, for some people as an example. And I remember trying to sell uh, Air Force Ones with, with Gucci print on the side. That was a thing for a minute. And I think Stadium Goods was, was really the first time that I doubled down and put 100% of my eggs in one basket, which basically means that we, we didn't have a choice but to get to the finish line. Before we launched Stadium Goods, I was talking to my mom one night on the phone and I was like, I've, I've been doing sneaker stuff for a long time. And I said, do you really think we should be doubling down in the sneaker business, mom? And she's like, you know, I remember when you were eight years old going crazy for a pair of uh, Bo Jacksons, the original Bo Jacksons. I don't, I don't think if it's been going for 30 plus years that there's any danger. I really believe in the future of where it's going. I think a lot of times when people open retail, at least when we did, we thought that it was gonna be gangbusters from, from opening day. And we really thought when we opened our doors that it was going to be uh, a ton of traffic and a ton of volume feeding through the retail. And what we learned right when we opened is that was not actually the case and that it takes a lot of time to build up a retail business. I do look back on the time that I spent in Japan as incredibly inspirational. You know, it was 2002, 2003, at a time when streetwear was just booming in Japan. Japan had become like this, this huge center for, for streetwear culture and for sneaker culture. There's a lot of huge shifts that are gonna continue driving the sneaker and streetwear world. You have the high fashion luxury world that, that at a point was very different from sneakers and streetwear, and now those worlds are meshed together in a bunch of ways. The people that are buying those high fashion products are just as comfortable buying sneakers and streetwear. That's a, that's a massive shift if you, if you look at things on a timeline. Similarly, you, you see international markets that are still very early days um, in terms of heavy demand for, for these products, but not, not always the supply to match. When you look at businesses that are investor-backed, there's, there's so many different success stories, but way more stories in the graveyard that you never hear about, people that raise money and, and don't, don't actually take it the distance. I don't, I don't have a next big idea. This is the big idea.